Hi everybody, Steven here. In my last video, we talked about VOREF routing within NSX, but how can I get my two tenants to be able to talk to each other? Well, that's where inter-VOREF routing comes in. So we're gonna take a look at inter-VOREF routing and how to set it up. So stick around. Thanks for sticking around everybody. So in this video, we're gonna look at inter-VRF routing. Now, before you watch this, if you haven't seen my VRF uh, routing video, you need to watch that because you need to understand what we set up. Anyways, before we get started, what we're gonna do uh, is, uh, I always like to throw this out there. Thanks for those of you that have subscribed to the channel, supported the channel, I really appreciate it. For those of you that are kind of new to the channel, please consider supporting the channel. It's simple. Click that subscribe button. It's totally free. This is how I get, you know, it helps out with the YouTube analytics, how I get compensated and stuff. I also got super thanks enabled, but that's totally up to you. Um, and liking and sharing videos help out. So why don't we get started? Okay, so um, I'm logged into my NSX environment. Let me go to networking. Let me go to network topology. I probably should have showed this in the other video. So here now is my regular tier zero gateway here. Okay, that's the parent. And I've got some other tier ones and segments connected to it. I showed that in the previous video. When we set up VRF red, we now see I've got VRF blue and VRF red. Okay, so we see that. And again, I, I had previously created a tier one gateway for red and blue and then segments for them to connect to. I did not show that because that should be pretty straightforward. You need to understand my routing and, and switching videos to see that. Um, that's it. So now we want to get, just to show you that nothing, none of this is working in between, let's click on Red Tenant. Let's go launch the web console. So the Red Tenant, let's type in IF config 172.16.130.11. That's towards the top. I'm going to ping blue 172.16.1. 120.11, it's not gonna work, it's unreachable. That's where we left off. I'm not gonna ping them all again. Again, that's where we left off in the last video. So let's go into NSX now. I'm gonna do interview VF routing between the two childs. So it'll be blue to, t blue to red, all right? So let's go to gateways. Let's go to my blue VRF. Notice the little VRF symbol on them. That's kind of nice, I should have pointed that out in the other video, but anyways. Let's click on edit the blue. And then under routing, you'll see enter VRF routing. I'm going to click on set. I think this came available in 4.1, if I remember correctly. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to click on set. Now, under here, I, could, I go add interview for routing. Just give it a name. So, actually, when you do this, you, you actually set the gateway. So, where do I want to go? Right now, I'm on the blue VRF. Who do I want to set up routing with? My With the other child or the parent? So, from here, again, this is where you pick. This is the parent. That's the child. So I'm going to say I want to do it to the child, the red. Now over here, um, you get a couple options. Route, BGP to route leaking. If I set on that, click on that, this is where I can actually leak BGP routes using whatever protocol, IP4, IP6. So just imagine this. Red is peering with a physical router in the outside world. Blue is peering with a different one. They have learned routes via BGP, right? Do I want to leak those learned routes to the other person? That's what that's saying. I don't, I don't care about that. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm going to cancel that. Uh, I'm going to show this. Actually, no, I'll, I'll go in here. Advertise out routes. Let me select this. This should be a familiar interface. So first of all, I'm going to go in add, and I'm going to give it a name. Again, I'm going from blue here to red. So I'm going to say blue to red. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I should have put a dash in there. Now, notice here, leave blank to set as any or enter an IP4 cider if any sets uh, of the subnet filters must be applied. So I can filter down on what I want to advertise, right? So what I'm basically doing here on the blue VRF is I'm saying I'm going to tell red VRF about certain things. And this should look familiar down here. I'm going to, in my case, my red sorry my blue subnet is on a tier one gateway so i'm going to tell it hey you know what tell the red about the network that you got connected to your tier one or i could say tell it to you know whatever networks is connected this should look very familiar when i talk about the routing because we talked about some of these settings these are things that i would want to advertise out 
in this case, to the red VRF. I'm just going to pick connected networks. I'm not doing load balancing or natting or anything like that. Again, you could also be very specific, uh, very, I'm saying advertise all of it. You could actually, again, filter down on that. I'm going to say add, and I'm going to say apply. That's good enough. Now, the in filter allows you to be more, allows you to filter almost like a firewall rule. Okay, what don't you want to um, um, advertise out? Okay, maybe you don't want to advertise out router links or segments or, or whatever the case may be. This is what this, I, I don't care. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to cancel that and let me cancel that. So this is good enough for me. Again, if I just click on this information here, it says uh, order the prefix list in their advertise or advertise static routes from connected gateways, sort of like a firewall rule. After the first match, subsequent prefixes are not evaluated, right? So again, this allows you much more granular control. Right now, I'm just saying tell red, sorry, tell red about all connected subnets on, on, um, on the, the tier one gateway that blue has. I could be specific and say there's certain ones I don't want to by doing this stuff. Anyways, I'm going to save this. I kind of long-winded there. I'm going to save that. I'm going to say close. So I just told Blue about that. I said, sorry, I just told Blue to tell Red. Let me close editing on the Blue. Let me close that. Let's go to Red now. Let's go to Red. Edit settings. Let's go into routing. Let's go into InterVRF routing. Add. I'm going to say I want to go to Blue now. I'm just going to do this advertise. I'm going to tell it, okay, let's call it. This is from, from, uh, sorry, it'll be red to blue. Call it something that makes sense. Uh, I'm going to say, all right, red, tell uh, blue about the connected subnets to your tier one gateway. Or red, tell blue about the connected subnets you have to your VRF gateway, your tier zero. I'm just going to leave this one because that's what we got. I'm going to click Add. I'm going to ignore all the other ones. I talked about those. Add, Save, Closed. I'm done now. Let's close our editing. This should work now. Let's see what's going on here. Let's go into my red VM. Let's go into red. Let's ping blue. I already showed you that it didn't work. Let's ping blue. It's working now. Let's go to blue, blue, we already have blue open, whatever, let's close that down anyways. Let's go to blue now, ping red, blue is ping, blue is, I always forget, blue is 172, uh, 16, 120, red is um, 172.16.130.11, let's try this out. Ping 172.16.130.11. There we go. So InterVR routing is happening right now. I wonder if I could talk to those web servers. Okay. Uh, let's go back to my iPad. I wonder if Blue and Red could talk to these guys, Web App and Database, which I kind of demoed in the previous video. It wasn't able to work. So let's go back to there and, and test that out. Let's go back to here and test that. Ping... 172.16.10.11. That's the web. Unreachable. An app and database won't be reachable. Take my word on it, okay? Uh, let's go back to here. So that guy should work in there. Let's ping web. 172.16.10.11. Not reachable. Okay. You don't take don't, don't don't take my word on app and database. So let's go to app. Not working. Let's go to database. Not working. Okay. So I didn't set that up. I will in a minute. That'll be the end part. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Consider supporting it. All right. So let's see what happened underneath the covers. Give me one second. Okay. So we're back. I always like to break up my recordings because nothing worse than recording for 30 minutes and something crashes and you lost all that work. So I always like to break it up and stitch it together. Uh, okay. So what did it do under... Excuse me. What did it do underneath the covers? Let's go back to NSX here. Let's look at... Well, let's look at the... The blue VRF. Let's edit settings. I always like to edit settings here. Let's look at interfaces. Ooh, off the bat, there's three interfaces. In the previous video, we set this up. We only gave it two. Let's click on that. Notice NSX created this one. Notice it's got this little padlock. Object created by system. Read only. Can't be edited. So it's inter VRF. 169.254.2.1. Uh, 
right? It's at that. Let's close it. That was on blue. Let's go to red. Let's go to red. Oh, I'm sorry, red's up here. Let's close editing. And let's go to red. Let's just open it up. Red, interfaces, and this one. Inter Again, it created that 169254.2.2. Okay? So that's interesting now, right? So it created this link between them. Let's go to the uh, my iPad. Let's clean things up a little bit. What did it do? Let's zoom in. Zoom in. What did it do? It actually, let's put that back up, put a link between the two VRFs. It created a static route. Let's take a look at that. Let's go into the edge here. I'm going to SSH into uh, one of my, uh, edge node one. Login as admin. And let's change this screen a little bit. And let's go into, um, yeah, let's leave it like that. Okay, that should be okay. Maybe we'll make it a bit bigger. Change settings, appearance. Let's go maybe with a 14. All right. Uh, I'm going to type in get gateways. That's just GE it auto fills. So get gateways. And you see a bunch of gateways I have. Now, when I created the VRFs, it actually instantiated a VRF SR component for red. You see that there's a DR component as well. So each VRF gets an SR component. Where's that live? On the edge node, it gets a DR component. Where's that live? That lives on all the transport nodes. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to watch my routing video. You'll see there's an SR component for blue and a DR component. The SR component is what's doing the routing. So let's take a look at that. Notice, again, it's got some big numbers here. Uh, the reason for that is because um, I've been messing around. I was teaching actually last week, and I actually had this um, lab environment set up, and I was doing tons of demos, spinning things up, destroying things, spinning things up, and destroying things. That's why the numbers are so high, in case you're wondering, right? Normally, they'll probably be like five, six, or something like that. Uh, so let's look at let's look at the uh, that uh, routing table on the SR for the blue. Let's type in VRF twenty eight. I'm now on the uh, the blue SR. Let's type in get route. I hit enter, and you actually see it's learned some routes one seventy two. These are routes it's learned from my outside router. Okay, these are just some networks that I actually have set up in my environment. Um, it's got 192.168, that's my physical environment. Uh, 192.168, 100.110, it's learned that again from my physical router it's connected to. It's not a physical, it's a virtual, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but what I want to show you is actually the important thing is right here. So IVS, what does IVS stand for? InterVR stat, inter VRF static. So I got that highlighted up there. 172.16.130 via 169.254.2, okay? So that is, so we're on the blue VRF, and it's saying you want to get to red network, it's via this interface. So it created that link and created a static route. So it actually added an interface. So let's type in get interface, and we should see uh, in, that inter VRF. VRF blue, tier zero, okay. B, uh, Backplane port there. Uh, sorry, where are you? Backplane 169. That's not the one we want. Let's scroll up, scroll up. Backplane, that's not the one I want. Here's the 192.168. That's my uplink for my VRF. Inter VRF 169.254.2.1. This is on the blue SR. Let's Quit that, let's exit, get, sorry, get, get gateways. The red SR is 31, VRF 31, get interfaces. If I scroll up, whoop, you see there is, come on, inter VRF 169.254, dot two this is on the red so that's that interface that was created 
by typing get routes, whatever, get route, short form is fine. You'll see there's that inter VRF route, the static route, 169, 116, sorry, 172, 16, 120 network is via this interface. So it's saying, oh, you want to talk to Blue, you go there. So again, this is what it did underneath the covers for us. This is how we're able to talk to each other. But let's go in now and maybe I want to talk to the parent. Other ones, remember those web VMs? I want to talk to those, right? So let's go in. Let's just do that on Blue, okay? How about that? Let's go to Blue and let's edit settings. Let's go into uh, routing, interview for routing. I already got one set up. Go into the red guy. Let's add one in. I'm going to pick the tier zero. That's the parent. I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to say, what do I want to tell the parent about? So I'm going to say uh, two tier zero dash gateway, whatever. I can, whatever. Uh, and I'm going to say, I want to tell, I want blue VRF to tell the parent tier zero about its connected networks that are behind the tier one gateway. So I'll go add. And I'll go apply, I'll go save, I'll go close. Done. I'll close that. Now I get to do the same thing on the parent. So let's go to the parent tier zero, edit settings. Actually, before I do that, let's get out of there. We don't need that anymore. Let's go to blue here, ping 172.16.10.11. That's the web. It's not working, right? Let's go back to NSX. We're on the parent. Let's go to routing. Let's go inter VRF. There's nothing set there. Let's add one in. I'm going to say, okay, the parent wants to tell, I'm going to say blue. So the parent's going to tell blue about stuff it knows. And let's just pick this. And I'm going to say to blue, <laughs> whatever. Um, and then I'm going to say, okay, tell blue about any subnets that uh, are connected to your tier one gateways. That's how I got it configured. And again, if I was doing like natting and all that, I could tell all that stuff to you, but I'm not. I'm gonna go add, I'm gonna go apply, I'm gonna go save, I'm gonna go close, and I'm gonna go close that. Drum roll, please. Boom, it's working now. So blue's able to hit that, let's go to red. It should be working for red. Ping. Uh, 172.16.10.11. It's not working for red. Okay? So now I got blue to red in VRF routing. I got the parent tier zero going to blue and back and forth. Okay? So blue's able to hit all those other ones. Let's just, you know, don't take my word for it, right? Let's it hit web. There's the web VM. Let's hit app VM. It's hitting that. And it's hitting the database as well. Let's just complete it all because I know I might get a comment down below. Let's go into one of the, let's go into web VM there. Let's uh, open web console on web. Let's ping red 172.16. Uh, what is red again? <laughs> uh, 130.11. Not going to work. So it's, it's not going to work. Let's ping blue 120.11. Rock and roll. Okay. That's it, folks. Um, Inter VF routing at its best. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Leave comments and questions down below. Uh, do me a favor, please don't send me questions via Google or sorry, via, via my Gmail or, or LinkedIn. Um, uh, leaving comments and questions in the comment section helps with YouTube analytics with the interaction. So leave comments, questions down below. If there's something you want to see me cover, I'll do my best on what I can do uh, to do that. Uh, and that's it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.